my students welcome to you all in the last session we have understood the few basic concepts about the health care here in this session we are going to understand first the types of health care what are all the types and then we will learn about the factors affecting the health care system in india here in this session we shall discuss about reasons for buying health insurance why should we buy and then again types of the health care the third one is factors which affect the health systems in india and also let us learn about the evolution of this health insurance in india how it has come into existence see the famous poet tiruvalluvar he has said that noi nadi noi mudal nadi adu thanikkum vai nadi vai pacheyal which means disease its cause what is the cause what may abate the ill let leech examine these then use a skill that means first of all let the physician let him enquire into the nature of disease what is the nature and then let him indulge into what are its causes and then let him find out its method of cure and then treat it faithfully according to the medical rules see now to find out the cause itself we are in a position to spend in lakhs mri ct etc we have to spend a lot can we all afford for the expenses so the health insurance this is the best way health expenditure it is a major outgo from an individual's income and out of pocket payments may not be sufficient in the event of even minor specializations a properly managed health insurance would not only protect the finances of the individual that is our packet money but it also ensures wellness by providing access to preventive health care a health insurance policy protects a policy holders against uncertain illness that is sickness by either either they reimburse the cost of medical treatment or paying a lump sum amount to the policy holder in the event of diagnosis of a specific ailment covered under the health insurance policy they either reimburse or they give the lump sum money the principal is from the total pool of premium contribution of the policy holders the fortunate take care of unfortunate in india presently the health portfolio is showing a high claims ratio implying that claims outgo is being funded from either the reserves or cross subsidized by other classes of insurance however this element of cross subsidization this would not continue for long period since other insurances are witnessing drastic fall in prices in view of competition as a result of detariffing hence it is imperative that be adequate numbers not only to sustain health insurance but also ensure affordable premium that is when the premium is costly we cannot afford for it imagine in the case of the senior citizens with the total number of insured persons being low they are very less in number both the parameters claims outgo and the number are loaded against them now let us try to understand what are the reasons for buying the health insurance there are numerous reasons to buy health insurance which we will see now the first one is to pay 
the medical treatment expenses in case of hospitalization due to any disease or accident. This is the first one. And the second reason is the health coverage. This can help the insured to limit their out of pocket cost, protects their assets and safeguard their future earnings. We should be able to save our money. Insured need not have to worry. They need not worry about arranging money. See having a patient in the hospital, we cannot run here and there for money. For arranging money for medical treatment at the last hour which gives peace of mind. The next reason is that the absence of any risk protection measures by the government to bear the cost of expenses related to health. In the same way the cost of medical expenses in ri is rising and it is expected that in future the cost will rise further with the inflation and ever increasing cost of medicines and other expenses. And then the next reason is that with this cashless hospitalization facility which we have now, we need not just need to show the identity card. When you sh just show the identity card, the rest will be taken care by the hospital staff. You have to just take the identity card to the hospital. Insured can get best treatment in the network of hospitals of the insurance company. They have a good network of hospitals which was otherwise not affordable by the common man. The next reason is that insurance companies offer, they offer 24 hours helpline which can help you to arrange for ambulances, get information about nearest to hospitals and the best doctors and etc. The human life is unpredictable. We cannot predict things in human life. Even if someone is healthy, they exercise regularly, they could be caught off guard by an unexpected illness or injury. We see a person as healthy, the next day they say that they have some diseases. Feeding habits, the lifestyle and stress levels are changing which increases the chance of getting caught by diseases and also health problems. The next one is that in case of critical illness, the cost of treatment it may be very high and it is not always possible to meet the expenses from our means that is from our packet. We may not have that much of funds. Health care this is a wide area. We should understand how they can be classified under various types. So now we are going to discuss about what are all the types of health care. Yes, the health care, it is broadly classified. How they are classified? The first one is the primary health care. Always the word primary means important. Primary health care, this refers to services offered by the doctors, nurses and other small clinics even which are contacted first by the patient for any sickness. First we will move only to the nearby clinic that is to say that primary health care provider is the first point of contact for all patients within a health system, the nearby clinics right. The next one in developed countries more attention is paid to primary health care so as to deal with health issues before the same become widespread to avoid complications, right? Complicated and chronic or even severe diseases. Primary health care establishments, they also focus on preventive health care. We might have heard about this vaccinations. So, they give vaccinations and also they create awareness programs. So, awareness they also give medical counseling to the patients and in case of any disease they refer the patient to the next level of specialist when it is required. For example, if a person visits a doctor for fever and the first diagnosis is indicative of dengue fever 
the primary health care provider will prescribe some medicines. Of course, he will give you a prescription. But at the same time, he will also direct the patient to get admitted in a hospital for specialized treatment. The dengue patient should be given a specialized treatment. For most of the primary care cases, the doctor acts like a family doctor. Everybody we used to ask, who is your family doctor? Where all the members of the family visit the doctor for any minor sickness. Even for minor sickness, we refer to them. This method also helps the medical practitioner in prescribing for symptoms based on genetic factors and give medical advice appropriately. See, for example, the doctor will advise a patient with parental diabetic history to be watchful of the lifestyle from young age to avoid diabetes to the extent possible. See, genetically, you may get the grandfather may get at 60 and the father may get diabetics at 40 and the son may get even at the age of 20, they say. See, at a country level, primary health care centers are set up both by government as well as the private players. Government primary health care centers, they are established depending upon the population size and are present right up to the village level in some form or the other. So, this is about the primary health care. Hope you might have understood. The next one is the secondary health care. This secondary health care, this refers to the health care services provided by the medical specialist and other health professionals who generally do not have first contact with the patient. That is, we will see the doctor for the first time. It includes acute care requiring for a serious illness. Often, it is not necessary that we should always go as an inpatient, including we have intensive care services, critical care unit, ambulance facilities, pathology, diagnostic and also other relevant medical services. Most of the times, the patients are referred to the secondary care by primary health care providers. The primary physician, that is we may call him as family doctor, right? In some instances, the secondary care providers, they also run an in-house primary health care facility. In order to provide integrated services, mostly the secondary health care providers are present at the taluk or block level depending upon again the population size. These health care units will be able to minor surgeries also. For example, a person falls down and gets fractured in either of the hand. He is in a position to undergo a, maybe a small surgery. Like for example, to fix a plate for recovery, these surgeries can be done in these secondary health care units itself. Their hospitals will have the provision for operations. They will have both pre and post operation care units also. The proper nursing care also will be provided in these health care centers where they have pharmaceutical units also within the campus. They have everything in the campus. See now we have discussed about the primary and also the secondary we have discussed. Now we will see about the tertiary health care. What is this tertiary health care? This is a specialized consultative health care usually for inpatients and on referral either from the primary or secondary providers. The tertiary care providers are present mostly in the state capitals and a few at the district headquarters. Examples of this tertiary health care providers are those who have advanced medical facilities and medical professionals beyond the scope of secondary health care providers like oncology, that is a cancer treatment, 
organ transplant facilities, high risk pregnancy specialists etc. See here it is to be noted that as the level of care increases the expenses associated with the care that also automatically gets increased. While people may find it relatively easy to pay for the primary care it becomes difficult for them to spend when it comes to secondary care and again it is much more difficult when it comes to tertiary care. The infrastructure for different levels of care that also varies from country to country from rural to urban areas while socio-economic factors also influence the same. Here in these units we are in a position to depend on some financial assistance. These types of health care make us spend even after selling our properties also but unavoidably the instruments like ventilation facility, chemotherapy are all very costly. The next one which we are going to discuss now is the factors affecting the health systems in India. The Indian health system has had and continues to face many problems and also challenges. These in turn affect the nature and extent of the health care system and the requirement at the individual level and health care organization at the structural level. Now we will discuss about these factors here. The first one is the demographic or population related trends that is now India is the second largest populated country we know well next to China in the world. This exposes us to the problems associated with population growth and then the level of property we know well has also had its effect on the people's ability to pay for medical care. Poor people cannot afford a lot. The second one is the social trends. Increase in urbanization or the people moving from rural to urban areas has posed challenges in providing the health care facilities. The next one is the health issues in the rural areas also remain mainly due to lack of availability and also the accessibility to medical facilities as well as their affordability. The move to a more sedimentary lifestyle which reduced need to exercise oneself has led to newer types of diseases like diabetes and high blood pressure. Even young age people have diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol like that. And the third factor is the life expectancy. What is this? The life expectancy it refers to the expected number of years that a child born today will survive. How many years we will live? See now the life expectancy has increased from 30 years at the time of independence to over 60 years approximately but does not address the issues related to quality of that longer lifespan. See now this leads to a new concept of healthy life expectancy. The next one is this also requires the creation of infrastructure for geriatric that is the old age related diseases. These are the factors. Now let us learn about the evolution of health insurance in India. How this health insurance has developed in India. See the experts from healthcare industry will anonymously tell you that health insurance is the best care. This is the only best care for India's healthcare problems. And the recent surge in premium for health insurance policies certainly conforms to that view. In spite of being a loss making proposition 
for most insurers for an industry that is only a couple of decades old in India. There is certainly a lot of optimi optimism about its future prospects. Though the health insurance came to India in the form of Central Government Health Insurance Scheme for Government Employees and the Employees State Insurance Scheme ESI for employees in the private sector. But it was only in the year 1986 that the first health insurance product was launched in the country. Since then things have certainly changed and now along with the government sponsored general insurance companies there are 20 private sector insurance companies approximately operating in India and offering their products. In the year 1986 when MediClaim was la first launched by the Indian government first in the year 1986 it offered minimum and maximum health coverage of 15,000 rupees in Indian currency and 5 lakh respectively. Today the minimum sum assured by this public sector insurance companies is 50,000 rupees and 1 lakh rupees for the private sector companies. While 95 percentage of the online insurance health insurance policies the minimum sum assured is 3 lakh rupees right. In India the health insurance started only as a cover for individual citizens and then their families and then it offered reimbursement for hospital treatment only, only for the hospital treatment. There were also sublimits and caps on every single item covered by the policies. But as health care started to evolve the sublimits were removed during the 1990s and with an increasing number of private hospitals and also the improved life expectancy more and more people started to buy health insurance policies. Even we have tax benefits also for MediClaim policies. The third party administrators they were introduced by the insurance regulatory development and authority IRDA insurance regulatory and development authority in the year 2001 which acted as the link between hospitals and the companies they play a mediatory role and in turn they allowed the insurance companies to offer cashless facilities on their products that is we need not pay even admission charge we have to just show the card. The advent of the service sector especially the IT sector contributed to the growth of group insurance and presently the number of health insurance in India has become more than double of the number of policies sold in the year 2003 to 2004. It has doubled. While the government had been busy with its policy decisions on health care, it also put in place health insurance schemes. Insurance companies came with their health insurance policies only later. Here how health insurance developed in India we will learn about that. The first one as we saw employees state insurance scheme ESI. The health insurance in India formally began with the beginning of the employees state insurance scheme introduced wide the ESI Act Employees State Insurance Act 1948 shortly after the country's independence in 1947. This scheme was introduced for blue collar workers employed in the formal 
private sector and provides comprehensive health services through a network of its own dispensaries and hospitals. For example, we can say a lot of hospitals like TVS, ESIC Employees State Insurance Corporation is the implementing agency which runs its own hospitals and dispensaries and also contacts public or private providers wherever its own facilities are adequate. All workers earning wages up to 15,000 rupees are covered under the contributory scheme wherein employee and employer contribute 1.75 percentage and 4.75 percentage of payroll respectively. State governments contribute 12.5 percentage of the medical expenses. The benefit covered under this ESI are free comprehensive health care at ESIS facilities. Second one is the maternity benefit and then the disability benefit, cash compensation for loss of wages due to sickness and survivorship and then the funeral expenses in case of death of a worker. It is also supplemented by services purchased from authorized medical attendants and also private hospitals. The ESIS covers over 65.5 million beneficiaries as of March 2012. The second one is the Central Government Health Scheme. The ESIS was so soon followed by the Central Government Health Scheme CGHS Central Government Health Scheme. It was introduced in 1954 for the Central Government employees including pensioners and their family members working in civilian jobs. It aims to provide comprehensive medical care that is total care to employees and also their families and is partly funded by the employees and largely by the employer that is central government. The services are provided through CGHS Central Government Health Scheme, own dispensaries, polyclinics and empaneled private hospitals. It covers all system of medicine, emergency services in allopathic system, free drugs, pathology and radiology, domiciliary visits to seriously ill patients, specialist consultations etc. The contribution from employees is quite nominal though progressively linked to salary scale rupees 15 per month to rupees 150 per month. Even now it has increased to 180. In 2010 CGHS had a membership base of over 8 lakh families representing over 3 million beneficiaries. The next one is a commercial health insurance. Commercial health insurance, it was offered by some of the non-life insurers before as well as after nationalization of insurance industry. But as it was mostly loss making for the insurers in the beginning, it was largely available for corporate clients only and that too for a limited extent. In the year 1986, the first standardized health insurance product for individuals and their families was launched in the Indian market by all the four nationalized non-insurance companies. These were then the subsidies, subsidiaries of General Insurance Corporation GIC of India. This product MediClaim was introduced to provide coverage for the hospitalization expenses up to a certain annual limit of indemnity 
with certain exclusions such as maternity, pre-existing diseases. It underwent several rounds of revisions as the market evolved, the last being in 2012. However, even after undergoing several revisions, the hospitalization indemnity based annual contract continues to be the most popular form of private health insurance in India, led by the current versions of MediClaim. So, popular is this product that private health insurance products are often termed by many people as MediClaim covers or even MediClaim policy we say, considering it as a product category rather than a specific product offered by the insurers. With private players coming into the insurance sector in the year 2001, health insurance has grown tremendously but there is a large untapped market even today. Considerable variations in covers, exclusions and newer add-on covers have been introduced. They have introduced so many policies. Today, more than 300 health insurance products are available in the market. This 300 is only approximately, you can see a lot of types when we visit the insurance companies. See now in this session, we have understood. First, we learnt about the types of health care and then followed by the factors affecting the health care and then last evolution of the health insurance system in India.